So this video is a bit of an experimental video to see if I can carry on the overanalyzing Avatar series, but on The Legend of Korra instead. For those of you who don't know, Overanalyzing Avatar is a decently big channel on YouTube that breaks down nitpicks and, you guessed it, overanalyzes Avatar The Last Airbender. He had this channel rolling for a year, but Sozin's Comet Part 4 aired this week, meaning he's done with at least the first show. Everyone has asked him over and over if Korra is going to be next, and he doesn't seem too excited about repeating the process with Korra for another year. Plus, he's mentioned multiple times that he would like to do something else away from Avatar in the future. Whether more episodes will come or not depends on if this takes off or quickly becomes a dead project. By the time this video goes up, he's probably already announced if he's doing Korra or not, but in case he isn't, this is me taking a crack at overanalyzing The Legend of Korra. Enjoy! I'm the Avatar! You gotta deal with it! This is what her poor mother deals with on a daily basis. I know that kids in general are assholes, but a toddler who can shoot fire out of her fingertips would genuinely be life-threatening. So Korra is immediately nuts at three elements except for air, which she unlocks during the finale of the season, but she lacked restraint and discipline severely. I'm sure Zhang Zhang would lose his mind with Korra, since he had such trouble teaching Aang discipline, Aang had trouble mastering water, earth, and fire, while air was his natural gift, and Korra lacks air while being really good at every other element, but she also severely lacks self-control. Basically, between these two shows, Aang and Korra are complete opposites of each other, and they have to learn and overcome their own things to become a fully realized avatar. Kinda neat. She's strong. Hi, Katara. Katara still has her mom's necklace even after all these years. I like that. And she still wears her iconic hair loopies. Very cool. Do you believe she's ready, Master Katara? Yes. If anyone can teach her what she needs to learn, it's Tenzin. Ah. <laughs> This is Ugi, Tenzin's Sky Bison. You might be wondering how the fuck Ugi exists because Appa is widely considered to be the last Sky Bison, but I did some research because I was curious on that myself and found out that canonically, Ugi was the offspring of a secret nest of Sky Bison that were being ca cared for by the Bonti tribe on an island in the Fire Nation, and that's why the Sky Bison survived. Appa wasn't actually the last Sky Bison, and that's why the entire herds of them are in the wild now that the Fire Nation is chilled out. Milo, how big is your mouth, dude? You can fit an entire grown man's head inside yours? This should be physically impossible. Gran Gran, I've been reading all about your old adventures. I've been dying to ask you, what happened to Zuko's mom? Well, Janora, it's an incredible tale. Gran Gran, you look old. How old are you? And why is it so cold in the South Pole? Can we make a campfire and all huddle around it and tell scary stories and make snowmen? And then... Poor Janora always gets interrupted. She just wanted to hear a war story, man. All I want is one child like me, a nice non-bender who doesn't blast wind in my face every five seconds. This is more proof that bending toddlers should be a massive threat to society. Why are you making me wait? I have a responsibility to Republic City. I'm one of its leaders, and the situation there is very unstable right now. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean unstable? People are just protesting with their small homemade stage right now. Maybe tensions are high, but security within the city seems fine. Don't worry, Tenzin. It'll get much worse. Absolutely not. The city is far too dangerous. Avatar Aang tasked us with keeping you safe while you mastered the four elements. Bitch, I am Avatar Aang. Aw, I love Naga. She's so cute. Aang's time has passed. My brother and many of my friends are gone. Really? Because it seems like everyone except for Sokka and Aang are still alive. You, Zuko, and Toph are kind of just big chillin' around the world in retirement. Why do you look like that? Why is your nose just two slits? Please just move your face. Please. Okay, okay! Food first, then air temple. Watch it, Naga! Look out! So, Naga just becomes a barreling death threat whenever she smells food. Maybe Korra should train her more. Are you tired of living under the tyranny of vendors? Then join the Equalists! For too long, the bending elite of this city have forced non-benders to live as lower class citizens! This is the first instance of Amon's revolution, but I don't see how this revolution takes off if people like this guy are representing it. I can see Amon's speeches getting traction, but these people would usually just ignore this guy unless they're genuinely frustrated with benders treating them like trash. Wait, shit, does Amon have a point? 
Hold on, I'm in over my head here. It's the first episode. I'll shut up. My friend here is not a music lover. Give me the money, or else- Or else what, hoodlum? I do enjoy that Korra is so quick to jump to protecting others. She does do it in a bit of a shitty way and cause more damage than the triple threat would've, but I do like seeing her being a badass in favor for someone else. Remember how reluctant to kill Aang was? If Korra faced Ova's eyes, she would blast him with the lightning immediately. There'd be no hesitation. Why not just bend an earth wall in front of the car? Would save you from literally all of this trouble. Naga howling at the siren is pretty cute. My dogs do that in real life, so it's funny to see they included this with the polar bear dog. I also really enjoy that the police are metal benders. Why do I like it so much? I don't know. I just really like the fact that they went for the metal benders with police. It fits strangely well in my opinion. So three metal benders descend on the scene, the one I'm assuming is the commander joins them too. Then we cut to commercial and there's suddenly seven, including the commander. Then during the small fight they just don't exist anymore and there's only the commander, and then there's the proper number of cops again. Holy fuck that would hurt. I'm surprised she doesn't need a wig after this considering those wires have enough retractable power to lift probably over 200 pounds of human and metal. Naga, what the fuck? This is like the third time that you've almost caused a wreck. Watch the traffic. This establishing shot shows us a statue of Toph, which tells us that she founded the entire police station within a two second frame. I guess it is revealed within a minute that Lynn is Toph's daughter, but it's a neat way to quickly show that Toph set up the police force. You can see the contraptions that hold the metal grapples on Lynn's back here. That's cool. They don't just grow out of their wrists like a lot of other shows would have them do. They also look like a contraption that would actually work in real life. Other cartoons might say that the 30 feet of cable is stored in a small gauntlet. This tiny old lady has a whole ass platypus bear as her pet? Bit weird, but whatever, he seems to be behaving. Is this your polar bear dog, miss? Damn, Naga should be a salon owner. She can give him a slick haircut with just one lick. I'm sorry, Iki. I have to go home now. Wait. I have done my best to guide Republic City towards the dream my father had for it. But you are right. It has fallen out of balance since he passed. I don't really like that Tenzin just changes his mind within two seconds here. He's all like, fuck off, Korra, go home. And then the next shot, he's like, never mind, you can cool, you can stay. It's the first episode, though. I'll give it a little bit of slack. You're the best! Yay! Korra just fucking picks a grown-ass man up. You know, I think the Avatar is just naturally gifted with super strength. There are multiple times Aang also lifted things that were like three times as heavy as him, and Korra can just pick up grown adults as easily as children. According to my research, the Avatar has super strength. I look forward to serving you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Republic City. All right, that's all the questions the Come on. How do you want to handle this? So, the Avatar has arrived early. It looks like we'll have to accelerate our plans. And fucking Amon. He's weird, frightening, has a really nice voice, and this short scene immediately sets up the new threat that is the Equalists. You can see the same face that was on the posters when that one dude was rallying for the Equalists. It makes you think, oh, this is an actual problem. So this video was pretty short, but this is the introductory episode for The Legend of Korra, but I think it does its job amazingly. It introduces our characters, tells us what they're about, and introduces us to the world as it currently is, 60 to 80 years after the Fire Nation chilled out and Zuko took the throne. Overanalyzing Avatar went into detail about the first line reads describing the character well, and Korra's line does the same, at least in my opinion. I'm the Avatar! You gotta deal with it! She's really good at bending, but lacks self-control and is annoying with it at times with her in-your-face attitude about it. We meet a whole bunch of important characters who are characterized well, and we see Republic City. Overall, this episode does its job, and I think it does the job pretty well. I know that this show is controversial, but I think a lot of people overlook how good it really is. So there's my attempt at overanalyzing Korra. I tried my best to keep the same kind of format and same kind of humor as the Avatar guy, but I'm sure I'm going to end up doing things different if this takes off. 
I'm pretty sure a whole bunch of channels also have tried to replicate the series, and I don't know how much traction I'm actually going to get from doing this, but if you enjoyed, please subscribe. I might do this with Korra more often, and I also like to review movies in a similar way. I've already reviewed Romeo and Juliet, and John Wick is in the works too. I also do gaming videos, music occasionally, basically any video that I really feel like making, I make. If this gains enough traction, I'll make the rest of the series for Korra. Patron shoutouts! It oh wait, I don't have an active patrons, never mind. But it is up there if you want to buy me a coffee or something. You get early access to video and shit, it's pretty cool.